All right, so today we have a video on quartiles and interquartile range. So this has to do with uh, quantitative data sets. Um, so the first thing that we need to talk about is this concept of quartiles. So quartiles are, so we've got a data set here. So quartiles are um, these dividers that are going to divide a data set into quarters. Hence the name um, quartiles. So we've got a data set here, and if we think of this data set as a rectangle here, these quartiles are going to divide this data set into quarters. So you'll notice here that we have three dividers that would divide um, this rectangle into quarters. So we are going to have three quartiles. Um, there'll be quartile one, quartile two, and quartile three. And uh, maybe you've guessed this already, but this quartile 2 actually doubles as the median of the data set. So let's, uh, let's practice finding these, these quartiles with this data set here. So these are data values that represent points scored in a game. Maybe this is a basketball game or you know, a football game or something like that. Um, but this uh, represents points scored. So the first thing that we need to do is uh, find our quartiles. And we're actually going to start with quartile 2. Um, so I'll, I'll write them over here, quartile 1, quartile 2, and quartile 3. Um, we're actually going to start with quartile 2 because that is our median, and that's the easiest one to find. Um, once we have that, we can then find uh, quartiles 1 and 3. So to find the median, first we need to order these values from least to greatest. And I see that my smallest is 3, and then it looks like 6. Okay, so I've ordered these data points from least to greatest. Um, and you'll notice that there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 data points, which means we are going to have one, um, one middle value, which will be our median. And we can see that it is 12 here, right? There are uh, five values on the left and then five values on the right. So our median is 12. So that is our quartile 2. Quartile 2 is 12. Now, quartiles 1 and 3 are going to be the median value of the lower half and the median value of the upper half, respectively. So, we're what we're going to do is we're going to ignore the median here and just look at, here I'll color code this here, just look at this lower half here for uh, quartile 1. So, you'll notice that we have um, five values here, and so our middle value here is 8. So that means that quartile 1, quartile 1 is 8. And uh, over here on the right side, we will do our upper half, which will be quartile 3. And you'll notice that the middle value here is 15. So our quartile 3, our third quartile is 15. And so that's how we find the quartiles for a data set. Now the interquartile range interquartile range, otherwise abbreviated as IQR, is simply the difference, the difference between quartiles 1 and quartiles 3. Quartile 1 and 3. Um, so all we have to do is subtract them. So here we have quartile 3 is 15. IQR is going to equal 15 minus 8, which is 7. So our interquartile range here is 7. Okay, so that is quartiles and interquartile range. Next thing I want to talk about is this idea of box and whisker plots. Now this is a way that we can um, visualize data sets, like the one that we were just talking about. Um, and so in order to create a box and whisker plot, we need our three quartiles. Um, and we also need our um, full range of the data set. So um, let's go back and oops, I'll erase some of this. Let's go back and we'll grab our data set and pull it back over here. And again, I'll uh, order this from least to greatest. And so we can then circle our um, quartiles here. Uh, quartile 
2, our median was 12, our quartile 1 was 8, and our quartile 2 was 15. Okay, so a box and whisker plot is a visual representation of this data set. And so the first thing we need to do is start with a number line. And we need to label our number line such that it spans the entire data set. So I will label this number line like this. I'll say 0 is right here. And we'll go by 5s. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. And we'll go 45, and I can erase the uh, the marks in between here. I'll try not to erase my number line itself. Okay, there we go. So now we've got our number line that spans our entire data set. Next thing we need to do is plot our minimum and our maximum values. So I'm going to do this by um, just making dots, and then uh, eventually we'll um, we'll make uh, lines later. So our minimum value here is 3. Here, I'll color code this so that um, we can see it better. Uh, we'll do blue for this. Our minimum value is 3, so I'll plot that right about here. That is 3. And I'll label that here 3. And our maximum value, let's use orange for that. Our maximum value is 35. So our minimum is our lowest value and our maximum is our highest value. So we have 3 and 35. Next thing we need to do is plot our quartiles. So quartile 1 is 8. I'll plot that right here. It's about 8. Quartile 2 is 12. And that should go right about there. And quartile 3 is 15, which goes right there. Okay, so now that we've plotted our uh, quartiles, um, we are going to draw what's called a box and whisker plot. And you'll notice why this is called a box and whisker plot. So the inter, uh, the interquartile range, the, the range between quartiles 2 and 3, or sorry, 1 and 3, is going to be represented by a box. So I'm going to draw a box around quartiles 1 and 3. Just like that. And then we draw a line through quartile 2, through the median, right there. Okay, so that is our box. That is the box part of the box and whisker plot. The whiskers represent the data values that are outside of the interquartile range. So all we have to do now is shade from quartile 3 all the way to our maximum value, just like this. Just like that. And then we add a little whisker on the end there. And we shade from quartile 1 all the way down to our minimum value. So this is a box and whisker plot. This is a visual representation of this data set. And what this tells us, this tells us where most of the data falls. So you'll notice that um, between quartiles uh, 1 and 3, half of the data points are going to fall within that, uh, within that range. So within this box here, within this box here, half, 50%, I'll say 50% of the data falls in that box. The other 50% lies either above or below this box. Um, and so these are useful for, for noticing or for, um, these are useful for determining where, uh, where most of your data is falling. And uh, we'll learn later that these are also um, very useful when it comes to finding outliers or data points that, um, you know, skew the data one way or another. So this has been a overview of quartiles, interquartile range, and the box and whisker plot. Thanks for watching.